But in real life, not very much is funny about ageing. If it is nature's joke, then surely it's a bad one. So without further ado, let's find out more about our biological enemy. Our first lecturer this morning is one of the few anti-aging physicians and researchers in the United Kingdom. He has a postgraduate qualification in gerontology from the King's College, University of London, as well as a postgraduate qualification in geriatric medicine granted by the Royal College of Physicians. He is also a chartered biologist for work in the biology of aging. He has written extensively on longevity, healthy aging, and anti-aging matters for both scientists and the general public. Furthermore, he is the founding member and medical advisor to the British Longevity Society. Please welcome this morning, Dr. Marius Kriazis. Thanks, Philo. You know, they say that uh, the best audience is the one that is uh, well-educated, intelligent, and a little drunk. So if you had a lot to drink last night, or better still, had champagne breakfast this morning, you'll be all right. Um, I love jokes about aging. In fact, I'm writing a book collecting all the jokes that I can find about aging. My favorite ones are those that uh, start with, um, you know you're getting old when such and such. So you know you're getting old when everything hurts and whatever doesn't hurt doesn't work. Or um, when you look forward to a dull evening at home, like myself. And uh, you know you are old when the little old lady you help cross the road is your wife. <laughs> or worse, worse still, when your wife says to you, darling, let's go upstairs and have sex. And your answer is, choose one or the other. <laughs> So for the next 40 minutes or so, I'm going to explain the phenomenon of apoptosis. I will explain what it is, what stimulates apoptosis, why it is relevant to aging, and um, how it is associated with age-related diseases. Apoptosis is a Greek word meaning falling off, something falls off. It is a um, program, program cell death. If you look at your hands now, you can see 10 fingers, yes? But when we started life in the womb, when we are embryos in the womb, we, we didn't have 10 fingers, we have webbed fingers. And during development, this webbing went, disappeared. The web cells died through apoptosis. And that's why we ended up with 10 well-formed fingers. So this is one example of uh, evolutionary apoptosis at work. Another example is um, um, during the evolution of the immune system, cells which are um, not, uh, they are not programmed properly, they are, they are able to recognize self and they are going to cause trouble later on in life, they are supposed to die through apoptosis. So, for example, T cells, which um, have non-functional receptors, they, they are supposed to be killed before they cause any trouble. The whole process of apoptosis has been um, compared to sculpturing a, a human body from clay. So, you have a lot of clay, and take away bits of it to, to leave behind a well-formed human being. This phenomenon has uh, been discovered relatively recently, in 1972, by some people called Willie, Kerr, and Curry. And um, it helps explain aging and cancer-related processes. Uh, the two are together. 
Now, apoptosis is a different thing than necrosis. Cells die through either apoptosis or necrosis. Apoptosis is suicide. Cells commit suicide for the greater good. And uh, then they are eliminated quietly by the organism. Necrosis, on the other hand, is murder. The, the cells are killed at random, and they, during their death, they generate a lot of toxic material, uh, which causes more pro problems later on. As an example, let me mention a medical meeting like today. There are some people in the audience, and apoptosis is the equivalent of people getting fed up during the lecture and walking out of the meeting. This is good up to a point because it gets rid, gets rid of people who are not interested and leaves behind people who are interested, healthy, healthy cells, the equivalent of healthy cells. Um, necrosis, on the other hand, is when a madman comes in with a gun and starts shooting people at random and kills people. That's necrosis, leaving a lot of mayhem and a lot of, um, uh, of uh, disruption. So I have said that um, during the death of cells during necrosis, the, there is a lot of inflammatory chemicals. Another difference between um, apoptosis and necrosis is that necrotic cells swell, whereas apoptotic cells shrink, and they are getting ready to be eliminated. Why does this happen? Apoptosis um, aims to eliminate cells which are easier to eliminate than to repair. There is a balance between when the cells get damaged, whether the, the damage is severe, mild, or moderate, and if it's economical for the organism to just eliminate the cell, then that will, that, that will happen through apoptosis. If, it's, if the damage is slight, then it may be better for the organism to just repair the damage. And it protects, again, unauthorized replication of DNA. So DNA that carries damage on it, it, uh, it, it does not allow it to, to be replicated. Free radicals and glycosylation processes damage DNA. And uh, this is a powerful stimulus to initiate apoptosis. A massive 10 billion cells die every day. The majority of these um, die through apoptosis. And you are sitting there now, and since I started this five minutes ago, quite a few hundreds of thousands of your cells have died through apoptosis. There are, um, where are we? Yes, there are some characteristic events which happen through apoptosis, and they, ha they happen in an exact order, more or less in every case. We have um, membrane blebbing, which means that the, mem the cell membrane um, it gets like a, a foamy appearance. There are a lot of bubbles around it. We'll see an example in a minute. There is um, cytoplasmic and nuclear condensation. The DNA gets uh, condensed and um, fragmented. By the way, this fragmentation of DNA is a good example of, uh, is a good indication that apoptosis is happening at that moment. And it has been used by many researchers as a marker of apoptosis. It is um, studied through a method called TUNEL, T-U-N-E-L, which stands for, I have to read this, okay? Tunnel stands for terminal deoxyribonucleotide transferase mediated uridine triphosphate biodine nicant labeling, which means that basically there is um, the incorporation of labeled material onto the DNA, and you see whether the DNA breaks up. Then we have the formation of apoptotic bodies. These are bits of cell. The, the cell that is um, 
uh, affected by apoptosis breaks up and there are bits floating around. Now, if we are lucky, we're going to see a video of a cell undergoing apoptosis. And um, this is a cell which um, has been uh, intoxicated with a chemical and is dying right now. You can see the changes of the, of the membrane. It's like a violent struggle. It's a, a death struggle of the cell. It's almost breaking up with uh, the formation of, of blebs, of blebbing and the bubbles around it. This one won't break up by the, by the end of the film, but it just shows you how uh, powerful it's struggling to stay alive. It notes it is dying and it's trying to, to stay alive. You can see the, um, where is it? Here you can see the condensation of uh, DNA and there. A cell came in, had a look, and didn't like what it was looking, and went away. And that's it. Right, so... How does apoptosis happen? There are three mechanisms, three stages, which are not distinct stages. They merge with each other. The first one is the induction phase. I'll say a few things in a minute. And then, um, I didn't do anything. Okay, then what is the effector phase. And the last one is the degradation phase. So what initiates apoptosis? There are many different pathways. Apoptosis is not stimulated by one thing. It's many different things which converge into one end point, the death, the, the death of the cell, the commitment of the cell to die. And there are extrinsic mechanisms and intrinsic mechanisms. Um, it, it's easy to study, study apoptosis in the worm, in, in C. elegans worms, because they only have four genes which regulate apoptosis. They have uh, a gene that uh, is a pro-survival gene, and they have other genes which are against um, survival. In other words, pro-apoptotic, they cause death. And there is the equivalent in humans, which um, have uh, the different genes, and uh, they are called BCL2, pro-survival, pro-apoptotic, uh, APAF, which I'll explain in a minute. There are a lot of initials in the field of apoptosis. And all of these things stimulate the caspases, which again are proteins um, which um, kill the cell. Now, as I said before, free radicals and glycosylation um, cause, stimulate, um, uh, once the, the DNA is damaged, this stimulates apoptosis, stimulates the different um, uh, pathways. I mentioned the extrinsic pathways before. One of these is, involves death receptors on the membrane of the cell. So the cell is sitting there, has the receptors on the membrane, which can recognize specific proteins causing death. And uh, these receptors belong to the TNF, the tumor necrosis factor uh, family of receptors. Once these uh, receptors are activated, they induce several uh, proteins and this uh, causes death. Now, the, um, the proapoptotic BCL2 is a kind of a protein that stimulates in the mitochondria, it stimulates um, cytochrome C. What happens is that the mitochondria have a good membrane around them. 
but if they are stimulated by different proteins, an example is PCL2. There is a creation of holes in the mitochondrial membrane. And from these holes, there is um, a leakage of cytochrome C. Cytochrome C uh, induces APAF1, which is another apoptotic protein. And uh, APAF1 stimulates the spaces. And then we are into the effector phase. Everything merges into the effector phase. The caspases. These are uh, proteins, they are enzymes, they assist in um, proteases, they are enzymes, and they are divided in many different subfamilies. We have uh, caspase A, caspase 3, caspase 6. Dif they have different roles in different pathways of the uh, apoptotic cascade. So you can see from there that caspase 9 is more active in the initiation of apoptosis at the previous stage that I spoke a few minutes ago. Caspase 3 is uh, uh, active in the effector stage. And uh, these needs to, need to be activated. They are not active. They, are, they, are, they exist as pro-caspases. So they are sitting in your body uh, like time bombs and they are waiting to be activated by the slightest um, fact. If you have too many free radicals or uh, increased glycosylation or any uh, toxins or toxic metals, this will activate the caspases. I mentioned uh, APAFs before. This stands from, uh, for apoptotic protease activating factors. In other words, they are factors which um, activate apoptotic proteins, as the name suggests. And once activated, some of these caspases activate other caspases down the, down the pathway. So, um, I mentioned death receptors. The tumor necrosis factor family of receptors are one kind of receptors, but there are many others. Um, so um, these receptors are very sensitive to executioner molecules, molecules like um, cytochrome C or some of the caspases or the BCL2 that uh, you've seen earlier. These are called execution, executioner molecules. Sorry, executioner molecules. And um, once activated, they kill the cell. I'll tell you something that I find quite amazing. All of this process happens happen during everyday situations. However, some cancer cells, for example, cancer of the colon, cancer of the breast cells, together with some viruses, have developed decoy me mechanisms, uh, false receptors, decoy proteins, to trap the, um, the receptors. For example, uh, cancer of the lung cells uh, ha have developed a special protein which goes around, uh, blocks the receptor, and does not allow it to be activated. So if it's not activated, apoptosis doesn't happen, and the cell leaves. The same with uh, viruses. Viruses infect the cell. Imagine you are a virus. You have infected the cell, and you sit inside the cell quietly, enjoying yourself. Um, and you, of course, you don't want to die. So you, you produce decoy molecules, which um, are released from the cells, block the receptors, and block the other uh, APAF and PCL2 that I mentioned. And they prevent the cell from, from being killed. So the cell lives and you live as well. Now we're going on to the degradation phase, which is pretty forward. It's not very difficult. Um, during that phase, the, there is a breakdown of the, um, of the cytoplasm. 
and the nucleus alike. The cell is fragmented, and um, the, when the cell is fragmented and broken up, the phagocytosis starts. Other cells around this uh, dead cell um, ingest it and eliminate it. So that's the end of the story. Now, just to summarize briefly, free radicals cause DNA damage, which activates PCL2, which punches holes on the mitochondrial membrane and uh, releases cytochrome C, which activates APAFs, which activates the caspases, which cause the uh, death of the cell. And, uh, it sounds, I don't know whether you find it complicated or not, but it's much, much more complicated than this. And you can see the initiation, effect, or degradation phases. They are not distinct. They are, uh, they merge into each other. Now, the next um, slide will show us a video of a cell undergoing phagocytosis. This one is uh, for an E. coli cell, that black dot there. But you can easily imagine that it's a bit of an apoptotic cell. You can see the, uh, the cell, the macrophage, approaching it, recognizing it, uh, ingesting it, and breaking it up. You can see the change of the internal structure of the, uh, of the macrophage. And I, I always think that this is the equivalent of a good belch after you eat something. And then when it finishes, it goes on to uh, find other bits and pieces and ingest them. So I have discussed the easiest bits of apoptosis. The, how does it actually happen? Everything is uh, finely balanced. All of these mechanisms happen uh, with the slightest balance, with the slightest uh, stimulation. It can go one way or it can go another way. Any abnormality of this process may result into either cancer or aging. Uh, too much apoptosis causes organ atrophy, whereas too little apoptosis um, will cause increase uh, cells and therefore uh, cancer. Returning to the example of the apoptotic audience mentioned earlier, uh, you can understand that too much apoptosis, in other words, too many people going out at one point, would uh, create problems because there won't be a sufficient number of uh, people staying in the audience to follow the lecture. However, too little apoptosis again is again bad because there will be quite a lot of people who are not active, maybe fall asleep, start snoring, and cause problems. So a balance needs, needs to be found. So the aim of anti-aging practitioners is to reduce apoptosis in healthy older people. And um, This is the end of the recording on side A. Turn the cassette over to side B. But they are not um, useful. And you can see there George, who, I don't know if you can read it, integrating, integrating signals hinting at his obsolescence. George undergoes apoptosis to show you that um, if something is obsolete and it's not useful, it has to be eliminated. Now we are moving into clinical matters, and um, I'm going to mention a few examples about apoptosis in age. It needs, needs to be found. So the aim of anti-aging practitioners is to reduce apoptosis in healthy older people, and um, the aim of uh, cancer specialists is to increase apoptosis in cancer. 
and therefore eliminate any cells that are not um, useful. And you can see there George, who, I don't know if you can read it, integrating, integrating signals hinting at his obsolescence, George undergoes apoptosis to show you that um, if something is obsolete and it's not useful, it has to be eliminated. Now we are moving into clinical matters, and um, I'm going to mention a few examples about apoptosis in aging. What matters here is there is, there is the degree of damage. If the cell is severely damaged, then it has to be eliminated. If it's uh, slightly damaged and it can't be repaired, then it's easier to repair it. However, aging causes an increase, increased sensitivity of, uh, of the cell dying through apoptosis. So if a cell is slightly damaged, but it's an old cell, then it will die through apoptosis. And we have to find a way to, to control that. Now, um, as I said, there is a balance between apoptosis and cell proliferation. Uh, we have cells, uh, creation of new cells, and death of old cells. If the degree of proliferation is high, then the degree of death has to be high as well. The degree of apoptosis, the rate of apoptosis has to be high to maintain a balance. If the rate of proliferation is low, then the rate of death has to be low as well to find a balance. In cancer, we have an imbalance of this. In cancer, we have a lot of cells being created increase the rate of uh, cell proliferation. And the rate of apoptosis try to catch up at the, at the beginning, but it cannot manage, so apoptosis is reduced. So there is a big gap between the two. Aging is the opposite. Aging, we have uh, a reduced rate of uh, cell proliferation. Cells are not being created and there is an increased rate of cell death. So again, there is a, an imbalance between the two. Now this is an example of apoptosis in Alzheimer's disease. Um, in Alzheimer's disease we have amyloid proteins which are uh, uh, a collection of uh, damaging proteins. And these are powerful um, um, simulators of apoptosis. Estrogens from HRT, whether natural or synthetic, um, stimulate, re, uh, reduce the, we know that um, they reduce the risk of dementia. How do they do that? One mechanism is that they reduce the rate of apoptosis. They interfere with the BCL protein, uh, which um, is involved in apoptosis. They interfere with that and modulate apoptosis. They reduce the rate of apoptosis of brain cells, therefore they improve dementia. Another example of apoptosis is um, through exercise. Exercise stimulates apoptosis, okay? Exercise induces apoptosis. So, is it good to exercise or not? What do you think? If, if by exercising we kill our cells, would it be a good idea to keep exercising? Doubtful. Moderation, that's the key, yes. Excessive exercise causes a lot of free radicals, which causes a lot of DNA damage, which causes a lot of apoptosis. Moderate exercise tries to, uh, is not as damaging. However, one thing you need to remember that um, long term uh, strenuous exercise, which stimulates apoptosis, could in theory be a good treatment for cancer. In other words, if you exercise a lot and excessively, that will increase your rate of apoptosis and that will balance, bring every, the balance back to normal. It will increase the rate of death of uh, cancerous cells. So that could be a, a treatment, but it's 
um, it's just a theoretical idea. There is a um, loss of uh, heart cells, cardiomyocyte cells, which uh, can happen either through necrosis by ischemic events or through apoptosis. And there are drugs which are used currently in uh, heart disease, like um, enalapril, which um, can uh, reduce apoptosis in, in heart uh, uh, disease patients. Another example of apoptosis is the case of increased coagulability in aging. Uh, new theories show that, uh, suggest that there is an increased tendency to uh, um, blood coagulability in aging. And this could be due to chronic inflammation or due to infection or, or different other causes. Cutting the blood supply to the mitochondria for just 15 seconds is enough to stimulate apoptotic events. So whatever uh, causes increased coagulability is bad for the mitochondria, therefore is bad for apoptosis and for the death of the cell. And uh, supplements or uh, uh, drugs which can mod modulate coagulation should, in theory, help reduce apoptosis. And there are different examples of this, ginkgo biloba, vitamin E, um, bromelain from pineapple, and so on. Now, leaving aging behind and moving on to cancer and autoimmune diseases, um, we've seen how there is an increased risk of malignancy when apoptosis is not uh, very, very strong. And there is also increased rate of autoimmune diseases. One well that you will see if you are uh, interested in apoptosis in cancer is TRAIL. This is another um, acronym standing for it's a relatively easy one, TNF-related apoptosis-induced ligand. It's a ligand, it's a protein which attaches to, to membrane receptors and stimulates apoptosis, okay? Stimulates death of the cell. Um, you can see the different examples where um, apoptosis may take place in uh, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, rheumatoid arthritis. In rheumatoid arthritis, uh, we need to have excessive increase apoptosis to get rid of cells, of uh, T cells, which can recognize self. So if, if these T cells can recognize self, therefore increase the rate of autoimmunity, they have to be eliminated. We heard yesterday about uh, telomeres or telomeres and telomerase, and you, uh, Michael Fossil will expand on that uh, later on. Uh, telomere shortening is um, very strongly uh, correlated with apoptosis. Telomerase reverses DNA damage, and therefore, if it improves uh, DNA damage, therefore reduces the rate of apoptosis, and it is used in cancer treatment. I have many patients when I ex try to explain this process, and they say to me, um, what's a telomere? What is it? How can you explain a telomere to the, somebody who is uh, a complete layman? And um, it's quite difficult. I say, it's a DNA. What's a DNA? And the thing I do, I do this. This is a DNA. My shoelace is a DNA strand, okay? The telomere is this plastic thing at the end of the strand. If this telomere is in good condition, that will prevent the whole shoelace from uh, fraying. If it's not in good condition, the thing will get frayed and will cause a lot of mess while you try to do your shoes up. Okay? So that's an example of uh, the end of the string, the telomere. I don't always do it with my shoe like that, but sometimes I just describe it. Now, all of this is very nice. It's nice to know it and uh, show off with a few acronyms and so on, but 
has it got any practical relevance to us? How can we use what we know about apoptosis to help patients? And here uh, come the modulators of apoptosis. There are many of these you'll recognize yourselves. Basically, what happens is that we use these products and many others, and we don't always know how they work. Now, through apoptosis, we know how they work. They modulate apoptosis. They interfere with one thing or another. Um, new things on the cuts are the caspases, caspase modulators, which are specific uh, proteins, um, genetically engineered proteins, to interfere with the activation of caspases. So caspase 9, which is, is a key protein in stimulate apoptosis, could be blocked by these modulators. There are some positive results in animal studies and in vitro studies, but not um, yet in human studies. And there are these other things. Uh, calorie restriction typically modulates apoptosis. Calorie restriction is quite good because not only reduces apoptosis in aging, in other words, it saves cells in aging, but it induces, stimulates apoptosis in cancer. So increases the death of the cancer cells. And uh, we have L-carnitine, acetylcysteine, and uh, idepenone. Carnosine is one of my favorites because um, it prevents damage due to glycosylation of the DNA. So uh, plus it is an antioxidant, so it's a, it's a double uh, um, protector. Aminoquanidine, kinetine, and DHEA are all very well researched um, modulators of apoptosis. DHEA, for example, uh, has been shown to slow down apoptosis in cells of the thymus. Um, it regulates apoptosis in uh, lupus, SLE, in dementia. And um, it, some research, research also shows that it can uh, modulate apoptosis in cancer of the breast. Apoptotic modulators in cancer the number one I would like to concentrate for a few seconds is the recombinant trail. Trail stands for uh, um, tumor necrosis factor related apoptosis induced ligand. So, if, you, if we stimulate that, if we enhance that, apoptosis get sti stimulates. So that stimulates apoptosis. And the way to remember it, I explain to patients, is that um, until now, cancer left a trail of destruction behind it. But from now on, this trail, this treatment with trail, is coming back to destroy cancer. So you remember that trail is a new treatment for cancer. And you can see other in dulci, carpinol, uh, ciprofloxacin, and uh, growth hormone, and so on. Now, as a summary, you can see that uh, apoptosis happens as a result of cell Ill injury, including DNA injury. And um, its aim is to protect against transmission of injury. Excessive apoptosis uh, results in age-related clinical symptoms, whereas slow apoptosis happens in uh, cancer. There should be more things coming up. Um, research is continuing, and um, I offer some examples of uh, supplements which can um, uh, be used to modulate apoptosis. Here we go. Again, going back to the example of apoptotic audience mentioned earlier, I believe that you found all of this interesting because I didn't see anybody apoptosing from the audience. So that's good. Thank you.